Cool. Our next speaker is Jeremy Glassenberg, product lead at DocuSign. He is an experienced product leader of over 13 years with a proven track record of building and monetizing platforms such as Box and TradeShift. He is a mentor to many startup accelerators and has managed several developer communities. Welcome, Jeremy. Thank you, Satya. Um, let's make sure the mic is working. Can you all hear me? Yes, and the okay. slide is up. So right. here you are to share with us on automating the API product lifecycle. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And Go yeah, ahead. thank you all for, for sticking around this morning. Um, as mentioned, the name's Jeremy. Uh, I've been working on APIs for well over 13 years, and I'm currently working on some API initiatives over at uh, DocuSign on the product side of things. Uh, today we'll be talking about, uh, as mentioned, the API product lifecycle and how new tools around APIs, and especially around the Open API initiative, makes it much easier, much smoother to actually plan, implement, and launch APIs. So let's dive right in. Uh, I'm going to start with the slide I hate the most, the About Me slide, but basically I've been working in APIs for quite a while. Um, what I'm most well known for is Box. I was basically the founder of their whole developer program. I've been working on quite a few APIs. I've also been a writer at places like Bramble Web. I've given many other talks on product management, in particular API product management. Uh, I've worked at uh, TradeShift on their APIs. That's the other billion dollar company I'm allowed to talk about. But as a consultant, I've also helped many, many companies um, launch their API initiatives and include several now unicorns. An interesting trend I've also seen is among those larger companies, as they've grown, especially in the last two years, they've gone from having one team for APIs to having many teams working on APIs. And some teams are more experienced than others, and they're having this issue of consistency in teams planning and building their APIs in different ways. So there's more and more of a need for a standard um, while still maintaining autonomy and maintaining high quality APIs based on the needs of those developers who are actually using our APIs. So let's get into that. I'm sure you've already heard a bit about API product management from others today from the last few speakers I've been listening to as well, which is great. I'll just be adding to that. We're gonna first get into a little bit of the history of open API and really everything before Swagger and the open API initiative. Basically, there was a time when APIs had gotten very popular, but RESTful APIs weren't really a thing, especially in the days of XML. Before, just as APIs started to get really across the board popular as every web service wanted to launch one, well, things were a little messy. This, this we're talking about like 08 to 2015 period. And by a little messy, I mean, really, really messy for anyone who remembers that. Uh, during this time, I recall seeing companies attempting to make those API aggregator, API connector tools that developers could easily write code to work with many APIs from many different companies, and every attempt flopped because these APIs were so inconsistent. It was really difficult to build something and maintain it, especially if you were working with more than two or three APIs. Um, and especially for those who remember earlier days, SOAP APIs or in FinTech uh, and in supply chain, those who've worked on EDI, uh, EDI technology, there's an API meetup group I know about, FYI, that's basically a group therapy session um, for those who've worked on SOAP APIs and EDI and have a PTSD or other you know, challenging issues, emotional challenges uh, after working <laughs> with the, the old APIs. Um, but basically, there were attempts during this time to have consistency in APIs. Remember the WSDL for SOAP, and as REST came along, initially XML-based, um, there was something called the WADL, which was an attempt to define an API in a document that could be used to automatically generate documentation and other things. And everybody hated it. Um, what then came along was JSON, a much simpler way of representing data and APIs, much more straightforward. And along with JSON 
came Swagger, which has led to OpenAPI. Uh, not just a REST standard, but a way of documenting and defining your APIs. This did a few things. It first automated some, some challenging aspects of API development. Like, hey, if you have a Swagger definition, you can automatically have good API documentation. But also, REST and the, sorry, Swagger and the Open API, and later the Open API initiative, kind of guided people into designing their APIs to also be RESTful. Back in the days of XML, you can make APIs RESTful, but it was common not to, to find your functions differently. And you know, this isn't a, a, a talk about, about REST, but Open API did provide guidance to encourage better quality APIs under the RESTful standard. But all this was really a start. We started having more RESTful APIs, we had better documentation, but more and more tools started coming along around Swagger. And one of the more popular ones um, were ways of, say, auto-generating um, your Swagger file from code comments. So if you just wrote and developed an API, if you code an API, you could, in your comments, make these notes and automatically generate the Swagger file, which could then be used to automatically generate your API documentation. And more came along, like, hey, if we already have a database schema, can we create a Swagger schema out of that database schema and maybe whip up a nice RESTful API layer right on top of your database? You don't have to really program much of your API. More and more of this gets automated if you want to just build an API right off of your database. So we're encouraging RESTful design, and we're automating more and more to the point that you can just build an API without even any additional code to it. But just because we could do that doesn't mean we should do that. And there is some controversy behind the early tools to automate some aspects of API planning and development through Swagger and OpenAPI. Namely that these tools assume that you've already written the code of your API and then you're generating Swagger. But there is the other possibility for RESTful APIs, one which as a product manager I'm very biased towards, um, and that's designed first APIs, uh, what we call the API product lifecycle, applying product principles to APIs. Many others here have already spoken about it at this conference before me. I'm gonna give a quick summary. I know right before this talk, someone else mentioned the term, if you build it, they will come. I will just note to this, that the term, if you build it, they will come. I mean, it really generally doesn't apply in product management. I don't know why people think it still works for APIs, but fun fact, this quote comes from the movie Field of Dreams. And it's an old enough movie that I can share a little bit about what happens. So basically in Field of Dreams, what they build is this baseball field that attracts the ghosts of these baseball players of the White Sox. Um, the players who actually took a bribe to throw a World Series game. Uh, so when you think about it, in the movie where this quote comes from, did they even attract really the kind of customers that you want? In product management, it's not just about building what you think makes sense and hoping that it works for customers. It's understanding the problems that the customers have and then designing your products as solutions to those problems. Others have already mentioned this. I just like highlighting that movie. Um, so then coming into bringing product principles into the API product life cycle, into, into API design, we'll just summarize this. This is what I generally teach in product management and summarize it for, for the world of APIs. And that's basically first, identify the value points and the use cases for your APIs. And there are frameworks like Value Proposition Canvas, this goes to questions like, are customers, enterprise customers, using your APIs directly? Or is this about partners who are building APIs to be used by many customers? Is it an enterprise API? Is it a consumer API? What kind of customers are you going to have? What apps are they trying to build? Then let's get to a high-level architecture. What really makes sense? Is this a data-focused API? Maybe we need GraphQL instead of REST. Um, from there, we now understand what are the use cases? What kind of apps are people trying to build? Let's go and design our APIs. Then we can go and build the APIs. Now that we have them designed according to those use cases, 
we can launch those APIs once they're built, and we have to have a system of maintaining. Developer community, others have spoken about here, but also API monitoring, logging activity, and learning from that, iterating upon your APIs based on the data that you're gathering. As I'm kind of showing in this diagram, if we apply these principles, well, to some, this is more challenging because you have to write the API schema, the open API schema first. But thanks to new tooling, this can still be heavily, heavily automated and smoothed out. Let's take a look at this. When it comes to design, there are tools out there we'll dive into that help you with API design if you're going to write the open API schema. Once you do that, when it comes to implementation, there are tools to reduce the amount of code you actually have to write, especially when it comes to, say, error handling, handling certain reusable aspects of APIs. We need to launch an API. There's more than just documentation today to help you launch a solid developer experience. And as long as everything is built around open API, there are tools for monitoring, logging your APIs that just import a swagger schema to know what to log. We'll get to all these details. We'll dive into this a little bit more in a moment. Starting with, let's just go right into this, API design. Assuming you've gathered your use cases and you're ready to write down, define the open API schema, define your API. They're basically IDEs now. Um, editors you can download or just use online. Swagger Hub by SmartBear, Stoplight.io, uh, Insomnia, which was bought by Kong. These tools provide you with guidance to actually code your, your APIs. Um, what I've also learned to appreciate, and, and this I've seen in general when it comes to API product management, if there's anything in YAML or JSON, you can usually slap some sort of a form interface on top of it. So we are seeing improvements going beyond just code editors, really, for IDEs. And there's more that can come here. But the tools are getting better and better to help you actually just write down your, your API plans. And included here are linters, error handlers. They will warn you if what you're writing is not RESTful or if there are other issues with your API design. So you've planned your API. What happens when you want to actually implement? What can we do to make implementation easier? Well, API gateways have grown substantially just in the last couple of years. Kong has become a billion dollar company. Um, WSO2 continues to grow. And these tools, they don't just handle things like, they don't just act as a reverse proxy anymore. They don't just handle things like rate limiting for you. Um, if they have your Swagger schema, your open API schema, um, they can understand certain aspects of your APIs, like what are the errors? What are the required parameters? And with that, you don't have to code certain things. You don't have to catch every single error. The gateway, once you actually code your API with a gateway, well, the gateway can detect if someone's not using the right API key, if someone's missing a required parameter, and detect that and return an error without you having to write code to detect it yourself. There's even, and I call this more hypothetical right now, admittedly, I haven't seen this work well in practice, but there are attempts at taking an open API schema and auto-generating server codes, server-side code stubs that you can do to connect to your backend and basically implement your API with some starter code. Uh, you'll see that in Swagger Hub today. Once you have your Swagger file, you can try to generate in the language that you use to code your API, some starter code. I have seen some challenges with that. Namely, it doesn't really connect to the database directly. We'll get to that. There are opportunities to improve upon these. Uh, but the gateway, in my opinion, is the center of all this. That's where you see WSO2, Apogee, and Kong acquiring companies like API Builders. And let's get into some other cool things you can do when you have uh, the open API schema. We've known from the beginning with Swagger that you can auto-generate API documentation. Although um, I do find, as much as I appreciate the ability of Swagger in its early days to do this, uh, that the original uh, Swagger documentation generator generated docs that were pretty ugly. Um, but we're seeing more and more templates, opportunities for open API. Redoc, for instance, does provide right off the bat with an open API schema that nice elegant three-column documentation that Stripe has highlighted. Uh, they shows off code samples, connects to any API libraries and SDKs that you may have, and even connects to mock servers. 
Speaking of which, these documentations now provide mock servers, which basically take your open API and say, okay, well, if we know what your output is roughly supposed to be, we can generate some fake data off of that. And a lot of developers just test your API without your API even being implemented. Uh, Redoc, I love, I, I, you can actually launch Redoc with two lines of code, HTML code, one saying load Redoc and one line saying, here's my swagger file. That's all you need to do. Here's my open API file. Now, going beyond documentation, though, there's more to the developer experience. Having a nice developer portal with guides, maybe developer console where people can access their API key and request to create an app. We're seeing this more and more along with those API gateways. Kong created their own um, Kong portal, basically a CMS to build your developer portal connected directly into your API gateway. AWS API Gateway includes a developer portal, although it's a little hacky right now. Um, Apogee has had one, and there are tools that are trying to connect to all of these. So for enterprises who are working with multiple API gateways, you might be able to have one portal builder. So keep a lookout as we go beyond API documentation to say, with your open API schema, let's get the whole developer experience covered and semi-automate it. And then, yes, we talked a bit about the mock servers already. There's also the libraries, the SDKs, auto-generating code right off of your open API schema. So you'd have to write your own API libraries right away. And I'm sure others have spoken about this, but at most companies I've worked at, the vast majority of developers working on APIs do not code directly to the APIs. They utilize the SDKs. And SDKs are hard to write, um, but there are means of, do say, Cogen to auto-generate your libraries and SDKs. I will have to admit, many of these libraries are also a little bit janky, and you can certainly manually create custom, higher-quality libraries and SDKs. But it's nice to have something as part of your CI-CD flow as well, where whenever you update your API, you automatically have updated libraries. You have to manually update every one of your libraries and SDKs. So most companies I see create some custom SDKs, but still auto-generate many of their libraries and SDKs so that developers can trust whenever there's an API update, the libraries and SDKs have been updated. And again, there's the mock servers, which can plug right into your documentation. So before you even implement your API, you can give teams a way of trying out your APIs. You give them the open API schema, they can detect what are the inputs, what are the supposed to be the outputs, what's supposed to be Boolean, what's supposed to be an integer, and just generate for you junk data, but something to try out the APIs before they're even built, which makes for a great developer experience and documentation as well. So you can start to see that when we look at the stack of the complete breakfast of a nice developer experience with documentation, with the developer portal, with some interactive aspects, with libraries and SDKs, all of this can be auto-generated now off an open API schema that can be very easily planned if you first create your open API schema and then generate the whole interface on top of it and then implement the API when the plan, the developer experience looks pretty solid. It's a nice way of testing the waters with your community. Now, this is what's available, but what I love to really highlight is what else can we do? A lot of this stuff is kind of straightforward. Oh, yeah, we have Swagger. We can auto-generate docs out of it. Let's get more creative. Let's think through what else we can get to. This is a bit that I'm loving, um, that I'm starting to see over the last couple of years people play around with, and that is come back to the IDEs. What can we do to make it easier to plan and design your APIs? Here's one thing I whipped up uh, about a year and a half ago uh, that we're solidifying more now. It's basically, you know, for most RESTful APIs, it's CRUD operations. Get a list, get individual item, post, patch, or put, and delete on one object. So what if we just define the models in an open API? And then the vast majority of the time, it's the same CRUD operations around it. So there's an interface and an API for this where you can plug in an open API schema that's just the models 
and auto-generate the endpoints. So most of OpenAPI can just be written for you at this point. Then you just tweak the functions based on, based on need. Uh, these are called Swagger decorators. They take your Swagger, your OpenAPI schemas, and they enhance them. Like maybe you haven't really well defined the type, the formatting of your properties. Well, for a company that wants consistency in your APIs, hey, maybe someone else especially defined what the ID format should be, what certain types of properties should by inherently be date time format, should be currency format. Well, there are tools that can take a more loosely defined API and create a strongly defined version. We're calling these the decorators, tools that can enhance an open API schema. So you can write something once, but then enhance it if you just need some extra guidance. And let's go beyond the editors. Again, this is JSON, this is YAML. Can we create interfaces on top of JSON and YAML for open API? That's happening. We're seeing Kong do that. Uh, we're seeing Stoplight do this with more of a form-based interface. Uh, we're seeing, yes, yeah, so we're seeing others who are trying to just make it easier to, through block building, define your API without really having to code it. I'm going to try to wrap up quickly. I know we started a little early here, but I'm still going to try to knock this thing out in around 20 minutes anyways. Um, finally, we've talked about dev portals and documentation, but there is something missing in the developer experience sometime. If you want to have a directory of apps that your partners have built, maybe a full-fledged marketplace for users to easily find apps and install them, that's a project onto itself. As a consultant, um, I have seen among many companies who I've helped to plan their, their app marketplaces that the plans and designs are very much the same. So can there ever be a tool out there that just works as like a CMS to launch a marketplace. Yeah, they're out there now. Open OpenChannel.io is one of those that's beyond a, de a developer portal builder and is actually an app marketplace builder. So now you can have your app marketplace, you can have your developer portal, you can have your documentation, and if you want to have a customer-facing marketplace, that can be semi-automated as well. More and more tools are coming out. And finally, going beyond API logging and monitoring, what if when a customer reports an issue, it doesn't just go to the developers who have some extra tools to look into our logs and see what went wrong? What if we can really easily identify based on the user, the app that they have, we can automatically check through the logs and say, this is an issue with the Salesforce API, with the partner API, or this is an issue with our own integration. What if we make those logs so easily accessible to developers that they can do this? We're seeing this with companies like Mosif and other API monitoring companies that have actually integrated with Salesforce and Zendesk so that customer service reps can actually pull up basic information from API errors and, um, and, and explain what's going on to a customer or report the issue to developers. So we can actually look at these problems before engineering even has to. So I want us to all continue to think about these things. What else can we do to improve the process of designing your APIs, going into decorators? What else can we do to improve the developer experience, continue to enhance developer portals? Um, even when it comes to coding APIs, we talked a little bit about those server-side code stubs. I've started to see attempts at this to say, well, the server-side code stubs, they don't do much on their own. What if we took your Swagger schema in your database schema, and we mapped everything, the properties in your database with the properties in your open API plan. Can we create a mapping to then auto-generate SQL queries and some code to take the API endpoints you define from open API and connect directly to your database and actually code some of these APIs automatically for you? Disclaimer, what I'm seeing right now in this has been very, very janky. They have not worked well, but again, this kind of cons this this these attempts are very new. So we'll see where things are in a year or two as more and more attempts and iterations happen here. But with that, okay, I gotta wrap up quickly, but I also take a look at developer relationship management tools, tools that help you manage your community and take a look at what developers are doing in your developer portals. There's more coming out there. Sorry, we, we uh, crossed the 20 minute mark, so we gotta wrap up here. But 
What I'm highlighting here is that you can now apply product process design first principles for your APIs and still utilize tools around Swagger to make this easier for you. On top of that, as you're working in an enterprise, you can make your APIs more consistent if you utilize these tools. And keep a lookout. These tools have just been coming up for the last couple of years, but over time, things will be more and more automated. Between our API gateways, Open API, and all these plugins, it will be easier and easier to design your API first and launch those quality APIs with less work. So here's to the future. Thank you all for putting out with me for 20 minutes. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh Thank you. One question. Yeah. So in terms of developer portal, uh, in your experience, what was the must haves on your developer portal to give good developer experience, just the minimum viable features? That is a, a good question. It's I'm really only somewhat related to, to this topic, but I guess if we're getting into like u utilizing the developer portal builders, um, I say the top things are just one introductory guides. What are APIs, how to use our APIs. Um, a big thing that I've consistently learned from many teams managing developer, developer communities over time is to go beyond your libraries and SDKs. And in those getting started guides have very, very simple code samples that are copy and paste. They all emphasize copy and paste for your code samples and make it really, really easy to embed that in your guides. Okay, cool. And uh, in terms of API product monitoring that you did say measure, manage, uh, developer community and monitor, what are the tools uh, or your suggestions to measure the business metric for APIs? So that can be a whole presentation onto itself. Um, <laughs> if you do Google like my last name and API metrics, um, you'll find a fun article on like vanity metrics and APIs. Uh, as a very simple example, I've seen so many companies boast how many API calls are being made on their API. And you know, there have been so many times in my efforts, according to plan, reduce the number of API calls you have because the APIs are being called too often because they're not really efficient. And so it's, yeah, yeah, if all goes according to plan, you know, to quote Jerry Seinfeld, I need to move back in my parents. No, it is, is like you have to set the right metrics. Um, there's developer NPS. Uh, a lot in, in terms of developer relations is like, what is the speed it takes for developers to register, go from registration to actually launching an API? And that is a big thing to think about, by the way, when it comes to developer portals, um, because so many places, they focus on getting developers to get an API key or get an API key and you know make an API call. But sometimes they focus on making it so easy to do that, that they make the API call and they just stop because they don't know how they actually made the API call. Um, so you have to really think through the full funnel. And so there are metrics. I wrote a couple of articles on that. Um, I remember the tool that came out of Heavy Bits Accelerator recently. I think it's Otter is a tool that they're kind of focused on community management. Um, but they're calling themselves a developer relationship management service. And so keep a lookout for more developer relationship management, which is trying to really Give you that funnel data. For those interested, feel free to ping me. I, I created back in the day a nice Google spreadsheet that I was trying to do through like App Script Connect to a gateway and help to like give you that data. But it does help to kind of be that DRM tool until we see more of that built out. Perfect. Thanks for your time, Jeremy. Great insights and tools. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks.